Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm gonna be talking about the 10 games I enjoyed the most this year. This is a list of my own opinions on games that I didn't necessarily finish. So if you don't agree with the list, that's okay, we'll have different opinions and it doesn't mean that the games I didn't mention are not good. Also I didn't play all the games that were released, that's just impossible. This will be on games released on PC only in 2018. So if there's a game released on consoles in 2017 for example that came to PC in 2018, I still count it as a 2018 release, so let's get started. Number 10, Far Cry 5. So this is a game that I was very conflicted about. Many of the things that made me like Far Cry 3 and 4 are not present here. I felt that the hunting was downgraded. I didn't really see a reason to do it in comparison to the previous games. Also no self-healing without med packs. Feels more of a generic game, but this was a game that I just jumped in to turn off my brain and shoot stuff all around. In that context, the game is great to pass some time, taking out outposts, doing story missions. The story didn't really hook me, so I did missions without much of a context. Over there's a cult that is treating people bad, so I shoot them, which worked well enough for me. I'm glad that I didn't care about the story since a ton of people were angry about the endings. So if you're like me and enjoy shooting in games to blow off some steam, this is a game worth playing after a discount. Just avoid the DLC, I felt bad about paying for it. The Moon and Zombies DLC were the worst, at least in my opinion. Although the one in Vietnam changed the pace a bit, so that one I can recommend. Number 9. Dusk. This is a retro FPS game. I wasn't expecting it to get on this list. I started on the PS1 with adventure games, so my childhood is mostly Crash Bandicoot, Spire the Dragon, all that kind of stuff. I started playing PC games much later. At the time I started on PC, I went full Counter-Strike for a while, so it was a surprise to me that I enjoyed this game so much. 5 minutes in and you're already having a blast, super fast paced fluid shooting and a pretty good campaign with some level variation. I'm now trying to learn to bunny hop which made the game even faster and there's also an endless mode that is what the name suggests. After you are done with the campaign you can play around in 3 close levels until your health reaches 0. Highly recommended, it was early access at the start of this year and it got a full release 20 days ago. Even if you are like me and are not into retro FPS games, this one is just a ton of fun. Number 8, Dragon Ball Fighters. This is a fast fighting game that as you can see in the footage, the graphics are in 3D but we play in 2D to say it in some way. Runs very well and looks like playing an episode of the series. Is that accurate in graphics? Despite me not being good at fighting games, this is very easy to pick up and play without knowing what you are actually doing. <laughs> After playing around 2 or 3 hours, you can already do very good looking attacks. I played locally with my girlfriend and it was very competitive despite she not being into fighting games at all, which never happened on other games like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. I would have liked to have many more characters to play as, considering the huge amount we have in the Dragon Ball universe, but I get the reason why it works this way. The game seems to be just very well balanced, so adding many different characters with a ton of variations in gameplay would be much harder to keep fair. So even if you aren't a huge fighting game fan, I recommend this game and you can get it at 60% off right now on Steam, so I think it's pretty good value. Number 7, Sunset Overdrive. This was an Xbox One exclusive for a while, but came out on PC this year. The controls work pretty well now that they fixed the mouse control, which was my biggest issue with the game. After the fix was out, it was hard to stop playing it. You have an open world with enemies everywhere, and there's a good way to go through it. You can jump from car roofs and bounce super high, and rail in many surfaces to get a lot of speed. At the same time you can fight enemies with very creative weapons like a grenade launcher that shoots explosive bears. It has a very good sense of humor so a lot of stupid things will happen in the story while trying to escape the city. I felt a lot of repeating missions though, since I enjoy the movement and combat so much I don't really mind, but consider that if you are tired of open world stuff. Number 6. A Way Out. This is a story driven 2 player only game. You cannot play this alone, you need a friend next to you or online in a separate computer. It's not a very complex game to control, you have to work together in many situations to keep the story going pretty much. Many of these actions are super simple quick time events and there are some other levels that you have some generic shooting mechanics that made it a little more interactive. I felt like I was playing an interactive movie and deciding in some factors on it. I get why you need another person to play it. What I said first about this didn't sound so good, but playing it with a friend makes a huge difference. 
it's like seven to eight hours trying to figure out what to do next and laugh a lot at the stupid stuff that can happen in the story. It felt like watching a fan movie with some interesting twists, but having some control over it, as I said a second ago, it's not something that I would play more than once. After you're done with it, it really loses its magic, unfortunately. You only need one copy to play, even if your friend lives very far away from you. By buying one copy, you can invite him or her to play, even online on a separate computer. So I consider that, again, very good consumer practice. Number 5. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy this is a game that was released on PS4 last year, but it came to PC in 2018. As I said in Dusk, I started gaming on a PS1, some of my first games were Crash and Spyro, so this was a game I didn't want to miss. I never finished even Crash 1 back then, so it was the perfect chance for me to play all three. My favorite one is Warped, the third one in the series. There's a lot of variation of levels there. I finished all three games in less than a week. I had a blast with it and many frustrating jumps on Crash 1, but on Crash 2 and 3 the game gets way better to control for some reason. So if you enjoy 3D platformers with a good amount of difficulty when doing time trials or challenges, you cannot go wrong with this trilogy. A lot of hours of fun content and it's 35% off on Steam right now. Number 4, Insurgency Sunstorm. This is a first person shooting game released very recently on PC. It tries to be much more of a realistic thing than many other FPS games I've played in a while. When you reload, you don't magically get bullets into your magazine, so you have to look for that. You don't know how many bullets you have left before you need to reload. You die in one or two shots. So yeah, it's a very tough game to get used to at first. There's both online play and against bots. The bots here are no joke, do not underestimate them. This game also has the best audio I ever experienced in a game. It feels like you're in an actual war zone. You can identify a lot of things by just hearing, even what specific weapon the enemy is using. The characters say a lot of things in context to what's happening around them. There's also swearing, which adds a lot to the firefights. Once you start getting good at the game, it's so satisfying to get kills or win, but at the same time you're never fully comfortable playing it. The sound alone can make the game pretty terrifying when going into one of the zones to take. I recommend you give it a chance if you enjoy more realistic and tactical shooting games. Number 3, Yakuza 0. This is another game that came to PC after a console release. This was my entry point to the Yakuza series of games. The story in this is amazing, somehow this game manages to blend some of the very serious story parts with a lot of drama and politics going on, to very goofy set missions that have no relation to the story whatsoever but make you laugh. You literally punch money out of your enemies. All that goofy set content to do can be easily skipped if you want to just focus on other things. But that's just the best part of the game, doing the goofy side content. There's also a good amount of upgrades that can be done to the two characters you control on multiple fighting styles, so you feel a good improvement on your fighting skills along the way. There's a lot of hours to sink into this game if you don't mind long cinematics, goofy fun side content and subtitles since the game is in Japanese, then this is a must play game for you. Number 2, Forza Horizon 4. This is a racing game taking place in the UK. The main feature talked about everywhere is the season system. You play in winter, autumn, spring and summer. This affects the look of the game significantly. It feels like having 3 or 4 different maps with variable weather. There is a great amount of variation in the car selection, so you can play the way you want pretty much, excepting on some very specific missions that use certain cars. It's been a while since I had so much fun with a racing game. There are a few of the races that are against things that aren't cars, like a team of bikers or a hovercraft down a mountain, and many of the standard races against other cars. The only two things that I didn't like were the super long tutorial, you get hand holding in the first 5 to 8 hours of playing the game. After you go through all the seasons, you are set free into choosing seasons, no more moments of the game telling you what to do when you just want to play the effing game. And it's only available in the awful Windows 10 store, so keep that in mind. Other than that, it's an amazing experience that I recommend to everyone. And finally, number 1, Fallout 7 is <coughs> Hitman 2. After the episodic nature of Hitman 1, this feels like a more polished version of that, but all the missions came out at the same time. I absolutely love all the freedom that is given to you in the levels. 
there are a lot of ways of taking out your targets. Each level is like a mini open world, and due to what I just said, the missions are usually very replayable. You figure out more and more ways of completing your objectives, using different disguises, creating distractions, accidents, and finding other ways to access certain rooms or areas without being detected. Mastering a level is a super satisfying experience. Unfortunately though, as much as I had a blast playing all of it, I was a little disappointed with the level amount, there are 6 of them, but 2 of them feel super small. Also if you own the previous Hitman, you get to play the levels you already own of it, but with improvements of Hitman 2, which I consider a great bonus. That gave me a reason to replay some of the levels from before. So yeah guys, those were the games that I enjoyed the most this year, please let me know yours down in the comments. I'm very excited for Resident Evil 2 and Metro Exodus that are coming out in January and February respectively. Hopefully those are good ones. So thanks for watching and Happy New Year!